everybody, it's Pam at the Paper Outpost, and today is Snippet Roll Day. Yes, it's been a hundred years since I've made snippets, so I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. Hey, Sunny, what day is it? It's Snippet Roll Day! Yay! Very excited, very excited. Look at all the wonderful snippets. Yep, there they are right there, folks. All right, Mom's going to show you how. Here we go. <laughs> okay, buddy. Uh, my little guy. <laughs> all right, so here we are. Um, there's a million and one ways to make snippets, um, lots of videos on them, so feel free to check them all out and find your favorite way, but I'm not going to mass make them, I'm just going to make one snippet uh, strip at a time because I've got a lot of little pieces and I just want to blow through them. And um, this is a fabric strip it, strip it roll, this is a fabric snippet roll, and you can also make these with paper. Um, so if we have time, maybe we'll make some with paper at the end, but this is primarily a fabric roll snippet video. And... Uh, you can add elements of paper to a fabric snippet roll. So let me show you a basic one. It's a very basic one. Here we go. Let me take you here. Uh, just little pieces of fabric, and I'm going to show you a couple uh, tips and tricks along the way to make this a little. This is uh, actually rusted paper that I sewed on there, and. Um, you can sew these or you can glue these so just kind of know that you can do them either way and i'll explain the difference but i'm going to sew them because i like the look and i think it anchors it very well and i think it's actually faster sewing than it is gluing believe it or not in this project so there you go that is one and uh, that way i say the basic one and then we're going to say the leveling well the, the next one i'm going to use a specific technique that i'm going to uh, show you it's very easy and it just makes uh, your day uh, cruise along a little faster, but this is like next level snippet roll. I haven't sewn this one yet. This is just glued down at this point. And uh, this is the last one, what, which I would say um, would be all my bells and whistles. Um, I applied a cluster here, which is, this is an example of a cluster, a paper and lace cluster or fabric. It could be anything, um, could be all paper, but I just put it down here, glued it down, and then it got sewed into the railroad track sewing on the side. Um, so then I, I put a piece of, uh, this is cotton muslin torn from a bed sheet and then stamped with a word stamp, a rubber stamp. Those make nice accents. They're nice and flat. Um, an applique, a little applique, very easy to glue down, uh, and also a little paper punch with some stuff on it and uh, a little flat back pearl as an accent there. So it's just some options for you where you can amp it up. If you want to, uh, just keep going, you can use buttons and all sorts of things. Um, little uh, metal charms, things like that would be just so cute. Okay, so let's back up a little bit so everybody can see what on earth is going on. And I'm going to really back up so we can really see what's going on. And remember that when you're done one of these, you can always sew it to the next one. So if you want to make a continuous uh, roll that you can have in storage, totally easy to do or glue it together. Okay, so let me put all my examples over here and we'll clear the deck. Let's clear the deck. And you can make these as wide or as thin as you want. Um, this is a two inch wide strip of fabric. It's just a random, uh, I think two inches is a good place to start. And you can make these any width. What I do is, um, I use Scotch Create glue stick and I just run a strip of Scotch Create glue stick down the center. I avoid the edges because that's where I'm going to be sewing because uh, I want to minimize sewing glue through glue as much as possible. I know, toes curling, toes curling. Yes, I'm going to sew through glue. But if you wait till it dries, it's not so bad. Okay, so here we go. Most glue sticks will work in this case, um, except for some of the real El Cheapo ones that don't grab anything. You know what I mean? We've all been there with those, right? They just like you, you use it and it's like it's not even there. Um, but this one tends to do pretty good, pretty well with light fabric projects um, as well as regular paper projects. So I find it, um, since I use, work a lot with fabric and paper, and okay, now there's one thing about working with the snippet roll. You will be cha doing the string chase from beginning to end with this project. Or at least at least I do. Um, okay, so now, now just grab some fabric and you can use quilter squares, you can use torn clothing. Um, you want, just be mindful about, um, and I recommend like going a little wider than what you got and there's a reason for that. Uh, but just go ahead and do it while your glue is still wet. And that will, uh, that will behoove you. <laughs> that will behoove you in the process. Okay, so I'm just laying this down and it's okay to do longer sections. Um, and I'm gonna show you how we can mask that it, it's longer sections. Okay, what is this? It's actually paper, no, we want fabric. Okay, here's this fabric. All right, so it looks like I've just got some quilting squares, but I've got a lot of leftover fabric here too. Um, okay, and just this last piece. What are you, some unknown piece of fabric? 
down you go. You are now part of this. And it's okay to repeat fabric. It's okay to do fabric themes. It's okay. You can do whatever you want. Fabric themes. You can do neutrals. You can do wild and crazy colors. Um, uh, whatever looks fascinating to you at the moment is great. And you can just do like mindless layering too, like not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just laying them down, not thinking because it's too much. It's too painful to think about all these things. So I'm just going to have fun. <laughs> and then you can put a long piece if you want to. Okay, here we go. Here's a little long piece. All right. So obviously these are not adhered securely. They're just tacked down by um, glue stick, which isn't that super strong, but at least it keeps them in place enough so I can flip everything over and do some trimming with pinking shears. I'm not going to trim the very end because I think um, it's a good idea to, it, you don't need to because that just extends your snippet roll a little bit longer, but I'm just going to cut just barely into the white, into the white uh, cotton muslin and just run along here with these pinking shears and just give it, a, um, evening everything up. You can do uneven edges and stuff like that, but I think this just makes it easy for the base. We're just getting our base lined up and organized. All right, and then flip it over. And you know, if you're a righty, do the righty cut. If you're a lefty, do the lefty cut. We'll all end up in the same place. Yeah. All right. Just make sure everybody's pretty much staying where it is. And, and actually the cut doesn't have to be perfect. There's something about the imperfection of, and the struggle that I think that um, makes it look more, more handmade, more um, from, you know, that homemade, handmade, grandma made it, little house on the prairie kind of look. Let's see if I can get all these guys in a row. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Kind of half missed one there, but I think it's okay. It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. Yep. All right. And that, we are done that part. Okay. So now you've got a pile of little scraps and you're going to save those because we're going to use those. That's right. They're going to become part of our construction. All right. So let's lay this guy out. Are we on the wide Z's? Let's go there. The big view. Okay. So we have this long strip with big chunks of fabric on it. Okay, so now we can take some of these little strips and we can create little mini um, bridges. Uh, we have two choices. We can go somewhere in the middle of a big one, making it look magically like there is a bridge there um, or a break in the fabric. So let's do that. I'm also going to use my Scotch Creek glue stick and I'm going to use the thumb maneuver, the great thumb maneuver, just to put some glue stick on that and I'll put you there and another one let's see oh here we have this one he's thin going for the thinner ones now that I just happened to create trying to use up my scraps okay and let's see you could go there I think there you would look good okay here's a nice little oh green one he's kind of short let's go for a longer guy this is a longer guy where can we put you you can be somewhere here all right, there we go. Just wide enough to, we can always come along and trim these off. There we go. Like I said, um, if you so, if you have some really long bridges of fabric or long stretches of fabric that are the same, you can use some of these to uh, break the pattern and make it look like you've got um, multiple short ones. There, maybe I'll put that guy there. All right. How's the lighting? I want to move this light over a little bit. Oh, there, that's better. I got some light on the subject. Okay. Huh. Okay. That was better. <laughs> I hope. I hope that's better. I'm trying to put light so you can see without shadows, but I always seem to have a shadow. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. So maybe something up here. I feel like maybe I'd like a green one. Okay. Then just put a green one. And as you can see, truth be told, there's lots of strings on the fingers, but that's just the way it goes. You know, it's just the way it goes. Okay. There we go. All right. So now... Um, you can do some, let, we, we can just trim these off. It's pretty easy to do at this point. And you can look at it from the front or the back. doesn't matter at this point because you're just aligning the edge. Okay. I'm just trimming off anything that looks like it's sticking out over the edge. But some things hanging over actually look kind of cute. So if you want to go with that look, I, I encourage it. I do. I free wheel, free wheel. There you go. Okay. Okay. Up to the side, up to the side, up to the side. And now we're back to this. Okay. So now we have more of a broken up look. And if you want to 
if you have some sh like sharp flat edges but you want to put um let's say you don't want it to look so stark right there you can just come along and plop something on it like a, a piece of lace I'll go a little closer so you can see maybe that's a little yeah so like without the lace with the lace bridge okay so i'm gonna stick the lace bridge on there i'm just gonna use the uh the glue stick yeah, that's what I'm doing. Down. It's down. Is there any other areas? Yeah, this is kind of one of those areas where it's a sharp against the sharp lines, sharp lines here. So maybe I have this. What is this? Nobody knows. But we're going to glue it down right there on that middle zone. And we're going to hope that it goes through the, the sewing machine. Okay, anywhere else we want to do that? Here we got a little floppy loo right there. You can either just glue that piece down or you can come along with something to anchor it down a little more. Maybe a little piece of rickrack. Sure, why not? We've got it sitting here. There we go. There. All right. And where else? We got something here, and then maybe these guys are a little flat. And the reason why it's it's um, the tip or the trick to the advantage of doing this is it tacks it all down, so when you're sewing, things stay put. It's easier to sew when everything's laying down nice and flat, right? I'm just looking for contrasting colors here. Are you contrasting? You're a little contrasting. I got so many things stuck to my fingers. It's not even funny at this point. It's not even funny. Nope, it's too close to that one. I want to have some variety. Oh, okay, what are you? Nope, you're that color. Okay. All right, so how about we try... Oh, what's this? This is different. Okay, I don't need all of you. Uh, okay. Now we might come in here and make you a little thinner. Just a little thinner. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to put you... Now you're awfully close to that one. Let me get... I, I can... I have... It's not like there's a shortage of stuff. Here, what's this? This is different. This was the edging off of something. Looks like a tablecloth or something. Well, let's just pop you on there what are you doing and um you can if it you know just however it's easier to glue this is how i get glue all over my mat by the way if anybody would like a grand demonstration of that this is how it's done yes now if i was smart i would have a wet wipe at the ready just to handle times like this i think i left my wet <laughs> my wet wipes open they're completely dry <laughs> useless okay um okay so what do we got I think, I think that's pretty good. Maybe something right there. I feel like maybe a little black would be good around here somewhere. All right, there we go. You can make your pieces thinner just like that, yeah. Okay, maybe we'll just put that there. So there's a little splash of black every now and then. I think I'm gonna cut this one in half. Let me give you a better view again. Oh, Cause I can think, I, this is a twofer. Yeah, little black, now these, little pieces and maybe here nor there when I actually end up using the stuff but I think it's kind of cool okay there we go got that and then I think I need a little splash of black down here just to somehow bring everything home together and it can be totally different it doesn't have to follow a pattern because you don't know where you're going to use these you know so you might just cut this piece off and that's all that will show so you won't know that there's other other pieces over there coordinating and that type of thing so maybe I need something here hmm? all right all right. Okay. There. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and trim those a little bit. So as you can see, there's just lots of gluing so far. No sewing yet. I haven't sewed anything. And if I've glued well, I don't need to sew. So just know that you can, if you really want to go in there and glue the bejeebers, you, don't, you can totally do this project just gluing. But if you want to be brave and enter the world of the sewing, which I encourage you all to do. If you haven't, um, think about it. It's just a tool. That's all it is. You don't, do not have to be born with the sewing gene. I promise you I am not. And I have put my sewing machine through um, horrible, horrible experiences. And it has forgiven me 99% of the time. And um, I'm learning and I'm, um, I'm still resisting, but I'm learning. <laughs> and uh, so apparently it's, very, it's, it's, it's wise to use the bobbin that comes with your machine, but I'm resisting that one. And it's also important to use um, fresh thread because apparently thread breaks and snags and gets old. So um, vintage thread may not always be the best, um, but I got a pile of vintage thread and I don't know how old it is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. Okay, so here we go. I'll pay the price. I know. I know. I will pay the price. Okay, here we go. You don't need to be right there. Why are you there? Okay, so now do I have all my little my little things? Let me think. 
if I want to put anything else on there at this moment. Now, so this is the moment I'm deciding, am I going to put other things or am I going to glue other things? And maybe I'll put a few more fabric things down because I can sew them on. And I have this little bag of appliques. Oh, this is a pretty little applique. Why don't we put you on there? Um, remember, monitor thickness. You want to go too thick. Um, and I'm just going to glue it. You could uh, Fabrifix glue it. You could Scotch create glue stick glue it. Um, but if you're going to, I would use a, a decent glue that stuff's not going to pop off. Yeah. All right, there. Maybe we'll put three of these on somewhere on here. Here's a little blue one. This cute little guy. Oh, I got a little black one. Look at that. All right, this little blue guy. We'll put you down somewhere. Kind of cute in the grand scheme of things. So we might be able to... Remember, like I said, they, they can go on the side of things. They don't always have to go in the middle. You can, you can hodgepodge it, and that kind of creates some interest for the eye. A little hodgepodge here and there. You have to, like, bounce your head back and forth when you say that. Um, here? Okay, that show up against the yellow. That's kind of nice. Okay, now I'm not going to put anything with sequins or buttons or anything hard or anything with staples that I'm not going to sew through, so kind of know that. All right, but I am going to put one thing with a staple. Oh, no, it doesn't have a staple. How about this? That's kind of cool, isn't it? Maybe I just want to stick that on there. That looks kind of nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick that on there. This thing has been waiting for a home, and now it's got a home. All right, you're going on. You're going on. Yeah, there we go. Was it there? I don't know. Here? I like that. That's kind of cool. Um, that was from the uh, handle of a tote bag that I took apart. Here's some other little pieces. Don't put any more. These are kind of, this is like some old lace that I have uh, just been whittling away on. Just whittling and whittling over the years. Whittle, whittle, whittle. Um, so maybe some smaller pieces. Maybe little pieces of fabric. They don't always have to be long and go all the way across. You can just use little tiny pieces for a splash of color. That's totally fine. Yeah. That works in our world because we are the masters of taking little things and then... Oh, it's too close. Um, creating magic with them. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, so let's see, where are we going to put you? We'll just put you here, here. Okay, there you go. And you may get sewn, you may not get sewn, because I'm going to make sure that I glue you well. All right, how about here, there. And who are the little Lacey Lou? Okay, gluing well, gluing well. Where would you like to go? Down here, please, down at the bottom. That's where I'd like to go. Okay, there you are. No fuss. Okay, so this is, I mean, I'm telling you, you can really use up your tiny, tiny weenies. You know? Okay. Tiny, very tiny. Okay, and we are not done yet, but let us go ahead and sew this. can sew it with any stitch. Maybe I'll try some... What did I do with this one? This was a straight stitch. Okay, let's try a straight stitch. Straight stitch. The straight stitch is quick. It's easy. Uh, you can even widen the stitch, so you're going to make it longer. Let me see if I can show you that. I'm going over here. To, I pick my stitch number one, that's it, whoop, number one, which is a straight stitch on my brother. Then I'm going to increase the length, so the length of the stitches are going to get longer. I'm going to go to 4.0. It can go all the way up to 5, but I'm, I'm going to go from 2.5 to 4.0. Yeah. All right. What does that do for me? It, it um, widens the stitch, and it doesn't take me as long to sew. Yeah, there you go. So it's good to start with the foot down and with the needle in the material. I, I, somebody said that somewhere. Somebody wiser than me. Go slow because you've got a lot of little pieces. And once you kind of get a handle of things, you can go a little faster. Just make sure those little pieces go under the foot. You can use um, a Q-tip, not a Q-tip, don't use a Q-tip. You can use um, tweezers or you can use a popsicle stick, something to feed the material in here. Um, go a little slow because you've got different levels and different weights of material and you want to make sure that you tack it all down. So this is, whoop, now if it goes bonkers, just Open it up, fluff it back down, and, and carry on. Don't sew over your fingers. Um, and let's say something folds up. Don't worry about it. You can glue something on top of it at the end. So it's okay. It's okay. Let's go to the very end, and then turn the thing. Come back this way. And now we're doing the second um, railroad track back this way. Pick colors that you like. I'm working with my, I'm internally trying to use up this brown roll of vintage thread that apparently is the worst thing to use, but I'm using it because I, I just feel this mission now to put it to a good purpose. And I'm finding that when I'm going slow, it seems to function. And oh, I also changed the bobbin. 
So um, the bobbin aficionados out there, you're, you, you got your day. I went with a plastic bobbin. I don't know if it's a brother bobbin. I can't read it, it's so small. But um, it seems to be functioning well. And I'm, I'm trying to use that some thread I don't usually normally use that much. And so navy blue is being on the back of this because this is probably not going to show. Okay, so now with all that being said, what have we got? Did we get anything? Anything? Okay, so let's see. This is what we have. I think it's kind of pretty as it is. I mean, this would be fine just as it, and, and the nice thing about the flatness of this thing, remember we're using cotton muslin on the bottom so it stays nice and flat and it doesn't stretch. That's important. We don't want a stretchy fabric. Um, it's nice and flat for a junk journal, but if you're a little brave or you want to put this on the spine of a journal, wouldn't that be pretty? Uh-huh. Or you could make a journal belt, you know, how somehow this could be your closure. Wouldn't that be cool with a little couple pieces of Velcro? Oh, that'd be so cute, Pam. Why don't you do that? Okay. Um, so these have a lot of purposes, these snippets. They're more than just belly bands and page trims, I tell you. Um, but I would say let's just have some fun with this one and glam it up a little since we're here and all and everything. Um, wait a minute, minute wise. I can't see a thing even. Oh, move that. 12, okay. Um, I'm going to glue down a, um, cluster and I think I'm going to use Fabrifix just because I'm not going to sew it at this point. So I want a strong glue. That's why I, I want a strong glue on here. Okay. Oh my God. So, so much stuff on my desk. It's not, it's crazy here. Crazy. I tell you. Okay, where could we put you? It looks so pretty, you don't really need it. Put it there, just just put it down, okay. Putting it down, see how you can load these up and you can just keep going. I mean, kind of like, the, the, there, this is pretty. I'm gonna put that where? There's no room, everything is, is I like the way it is. Um, maybe here? Okay, we could do that, well, you could you? You could. All right, I'm gonna put it there, just so we can say we did. And then I'm gonna put a couple of flat back pearls. That'll give a little elevation, but in my world, not too much. Um, decide for oneself. So I mean, there's paper going on here. There's um, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so we got some flat back pearls. Here's a little flat back pearl. It's kind of pretty, right? Yeah. Okay. He might look nice, right? Right on that flower. I can't want to see that closer. Whoop. Yep. See, that looks really cute. Let's put him on there. You can do it. You can do it because you've you've uh, you've got maybe you've got fabric fix. Probably most glues would work in this case. Just putting that little guy on there is no big deal, right? Anybody can do that. And then, what do we have? What do we have? I don't know, is that 22? Oh, we might even have time to make another one. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let us, let us. That's what we, yeah, I had a weird lunch today. I put lettuce in my turkey chili. Uh, because it, lettuce was on its last day and it was like now or never for the lettuce. And I thought, well, we're never gonna eat this giant lettuce salad right now with the turkey chili so let me uh here a little flat back pearl that's kind of cute notice the gluey fingers yeah yeah um it went in the turkey chili yeah it did okay so here we go what do we got this might look pretty here that there or else maybe maybe here it could just be at random anywhere like there and like nobody's expecting that let's do that and uh we we'll just glue it down a little fabric fix fabric fix Here's a clear sil silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Oh, oh, I showed you. If you've never seen it, it looks like this. Yeah, a little red tip cap, fabric fix. Okay. And um, works very similar to Fabri-Tac, Beacon 3 in 1 glue. And I think there's another one. But um, there you go. So, I mean, uh, um, okay, wait, let's, let's also, um, let's add a couple. You can do buttons, you can do little metal charms. I mean, there's just like a lot of things that you can do. Okay, so let's let's try some. Here's a little, I don't know what this is. I've just grabbed a handful of something. Little metal key charms. Okay, now remember if they're too big, it won't roll well, but if it's gonna lay straight on an anything, it won't bend at that point. Just kind of be aware of that. So if you don't know what you're using it for, you may want to just remember that. So I'm going to use, you could use E6000 for this metal to fabric, but I think this is just a little guy and we can, he's going to work like, like a charm. You could also sew these guys in. Um, if you feel so inclined. Okay, I'm going to cross three and that's going to cover that bridge down. See, that's very cute, right? Um, so there's a lot of different things 
things that you can do. A lot of little bits and bobs all over your desk. You could just sit there and do a day of snippets. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Okay, I'll put you there. There. Are you down? Stay down. Okay. There he is. Down. Okay. He would glue. So there we go. We have our little roll snippet roll. Let me back you up a little bit. And we'll move that thing out of the way. Okay, so do we want to make another one? I think I think I do have more. Um, I, I know I have more. Uh, I have more. You know what, the stuff. Oh, this one I half made. So let's finish this one. Okay, so this one was using the same concept, making the bridges and... Oops, dropped something. And um, I realized that I was not recording. So that's how this one got created. <laughs> So maybe let's go put some more papery things on here. So like, look, that's, that's pretty, right? Yeah, maybe he could like sit down here. Yeah, that could happen. All right, where's the glue stick? Maybe let's use Fabrifix for this. Because fabric to paper. Okay. All right. Oops. Oh. I, I, I got to move my glue. It's way over there. That's not working. Okay. Where are we going to put you? Somewhere where you'll pop. Here, you'll pop on the black. Okay, there we go. And who else do we have? Do we have this little, I have this little bucket of um, clusters that I made. Here's a little punch. If you've got punched out, somebody was asking me, what can I do with my punched out shapes? Put them on your snippet um, roll. That would be an awesome idea uh, because they behoove themselves to being on a snippet roll. I'm going to tell you. Okay, how about you here, there? Okay, that's nice. And what else do we have? I have this weird little bird. Yeah, let's put him on. He wants to be on too. I want to, I want to play with the big birds. Okay, come, come with us. We'll put you on here. Um, a little on the head. Okay, you don't want to be too close to that bird. Where do you want to be? Over here? Here? Oh, okay, you can be looking at that bird. How about that? Two birds looking at each other. Yeah. There we go. I mean, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. And for some reason, you put it all on and it all looks good. Here's a piece of leaf. I don't know how that'll roll up. Probably not too well. It's got a little, not so much, but um, a little pliability in it. Well, let's just stick it down. You know, if it clumps off, it clumps off. And here we go. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Got that guy there. Looking for contrast. Contrast is our friend. Um, if you have these little let uh things from game pieces these are actually faux ones uh, so they're a little bit thinner but uh, you can find stuff like that in the art and craft stores little silly things that you can glue on to your snippets we're always gluing something onto our snippets <laughs> aren't we though okay that got stuck there that's where it went okay let me back up a little more so you can see so they they come together pretty quickly and um i don't think we're gonna make another one i'm gonna give you all the examples i thought i there should be another one. Is it here? No, made one, made two. There should be four. Where is it? Where is it? Let me go do a thorough search. Hold on. Found it. It was right there in front of me. So here's one. Just a basic one. This one I did a um, zigzag. Oh, bring you down here. The light's better. The zigzag stitch with the drop stitches because I was using the, um, the wrong bobbin apparently. So, but you can see how the train track sewing goes over and tacks down all the little things. And where it didn't, like let's say this piece of paper where it was like open here, I just ran around with a little bit of Fabrifix under there and smooshed it. And then it stuck, just stuck a little random piece of lace on there with Fabrifix or um, the other glue, um, Scotch washi tape, not what, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Scotch create glue stick, um, this stuff. Yeah, if you've never seen that before. Okay, that's a good glue stick. And um, there you go. So um, I hope you enjoyed this little project. I thought it was a lot of fun to do. And now I've got lots of uh, little uh, snippet rolls to use in journals. And they come in so handy. Like I said, you can use them for so many things, for uh, page trims or belly bands or toppers on journal cards. Um, trims. You can actually make uh, pockets and tucks out of these. Uh, you can do a wrap or a uh, Velcro belt closure for your journal with one of these. That'd be cool. Maybe I'll do that on the next journal. That would be fun. Um, and um, you can turn them into bookmarks. I mean, they, there's just a, a plethora of things that you can do with your snippet rolls. So if you wanted to store them, 
Now, you could roll them all together and then just decide, you could do this, like just roll them and, and say, okay, this is my giant set of four snippets and I'm just going to roll them all apart and see what section I want to use. Or you could roll them individually. Or you can also take them in half and then do bigger rolling. Yeah, you could totally do that. Like that. There you go. Now that, that key is kind of sticking off, but you know what I mean. And, or you could just go old school and just roll up on itself. Mm-hmm. Now, whether there's a clumpy thing or a piece of paper, it might get a little weird, but you can, you can do it. Just keep going. Yeah. Just pretend like it's material and just keep going. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one. Okay, so we got those. And we'll roll this up. Yeah. A little stiffer where the bigger things are. Um, but, you know, you can like long roll, flap them like this way. Do one of those deals. Um, it's like a little burrito. And then we just, I think this was a very simple one with not much glued on here. So I just did an old fashioned roll. So don't, don't feel like your little bits and bops are going to go to waste. If you can snip it, then you can use them. So there you go, folks. I hope you had fun. Uh, this is a lot of fun for me to spend time with you. So thanks for hanging out. And thanks to all the new people that have come along. Uh, paper Lovers Unite. We are all here playing with paper, making our own books, making junk journals. Uh, I have Sunny, my little Maltese dog, hanging out with occasional cameos. I also have an African gray parrot who loves to whistle in the background. And I also have... Um, uh, two lovebirds and uh, Papa is upstairs uh, usually working in his office and he occasionally creeps down for, for lunch and food and stuff like that so um, if you find uh, you're having a good time here please like subscribe and share and my videos do come out Mondays Wednesdays Fridays and Saturdays 7 a.m. Eastern time uh, I do have fundals available right now so I have uh, reloaded those in my Etsy shop and they are ephemera collections of 100 pieces uh, very unique items that are either um, very old or very interesting for making junk journals and uh, if you'd like to see a video related to what one of those are, the link is down below. And um, so if you if they are available, if you see the, the fundal link, they're available. If you don't see it, then they're not available. So that's kind of how it goes. And um, I do a podcast, which is new material, uh, different from my videos, which is uh, free to listen to. You, if you have Apple or Spotify, or you just click the link down below and anybody can listen to it free anytime, anywhere in the world. And I have over three years worth of uh, seasons. So feel free to jump in and uh, listen to everything related to paper crafting, junk journals, uh, uh, journal making, um, life of a crafter, answering crafter questions, all sorts of fun stuff. I have a free monthly email newsletter. If you haven't signed up for that, please sign up for it. You'll get a free digi digital image emailed to you every month so that you can print it out and um, save it to your computer print it out and download it and you know you know what i mean um, but basically um free for you to use any way you like have fun with it um the it's also uh there's uh tips and tricks and updates from me and a note from the bookmaker which explains what a junk journal is you can tuck in the front of your junk journals to help to explain that to folks and um a long list of uh, junk journal supplies to keep your eyes open for and um i have an etsy shop where um, you can uh, purchase the fundals also vintage digital kits the things i was telling you about as well as um uh, actual journals when they're available and bundles of interesting things when they are available. And uh, I have a Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. And um, um, I love to see what you guys make from these videos. You guys are ama amazing. So keep it coming. You're doing awesome. Um, I have an Amazon shop. So if you're looking for links to basic supplies that you see me use here, I put those in my Amazon shop as a launching pad for you guys to uh, check out details about the uh, product or the information and and uh, just, you know, it may take you down all sorts of exciting shopping holes. Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And all my links are located in the drop-down description box below each video. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. And who knows what we'll be making next, but it's going to be fun. It'll be a papery. So take care, everyone. Bye-bye.